Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. I am Dr. Kofi, and in today's video, we will look at our fourth tutorial in surgery based on the GMDC exam. The links to our first, second, and third surgery tutorials are provided in the video description below, and so kindly have a look at them if you've not seen them yet. And if you are new here, kindly consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to get notified anytime we upload new videos. Alright friends, shall we? Very good. And so let's take a look at the question. The question read, a 60 year old man presents with increasing dysphagia to solids but not liquids for a while and sometimes he vomits the food while eating and then he coughs at night. He has lost weight, is pale, cachectic and dehydrated. There were four questions under this clinical vignette. The first read, what is your diagnosis? And so as usual, a few seconds to think through this case. And so the relevant information here include the age of the man, he's a 60 year old man, so an elderly, and then he has dysphagia to solids but not to liquids for a while. This is a very important information. The fact that he has lost weight and the fact that he is cachectic and then dehydrated. And so here, the diagnosis is likely to be oesophageal carcinoma and so as usual or like we do let's take a short journey through dysphagia in general and then oesophageal carcinoma and so dysphagia simply means difficulty in swallowing it is the main presenting symptom of oesophageal disease but may also be due to a problem in the oropharynx so an oropharyngeal disease or condition dysphagia can be thought to be from either a problem in the oropharynx like i mentioned so maybe the patient has stomatitis or has pharyngitis or tonsillitis it may cause dysphagia or it can be a problem from the oesophagus. So the patient may have oesophagitis, the patient may have oesophageal tumors, and that can present with dysphagia. And sometimes the patient may have a problem with the stomach that can give you dysphagia, like having carcinoma of the cardia, the part of the stomach which is closer to the oesophagus. A patient can have dysphagia. But it is mainly from an oesophageal disease like mentioned earlier. And so as said earlier, there are several causes of dysphagia. The four commonest causes of dysphagia in Africans which are of surgical importance are 1. Oesophageal carcinoma, which is simply a malignant tumor in the oesophagus 2. Achalasia It is a disorder of oesophageal motility and this problem with oesophageal movement is due to failure of the normally contracted lower oesophageal sphincter to relax and because of that the patient has difficulty swallowing the lower oesophageal sphincter is unable to relax to make food go into the stomach and so the food gets stuck and then this causes dysphagia then we have oesophageal stricture from corrosive agents the patient accidentally takes in corrosive agents it can burn the oesophageal mucosa and cause oesophageal stricture or the patient suicidally this one it was on intention on purpose to take it so it could be accidental or suicidal or intentional 
and then we have peptic oesophagitis. And so this information is from Baja, the Bible of tropical surgery, the four most common causes of dysphagia in Africans of surgical importance are oesophageal carcinoma, echalasia, oesophageal stricture from accidental or intentional ingestion of corrosive agents, and then peptic oesophagitis, which is a reflux of the contents of the stomach to induce inflammation in the oesophagus causing um, dysphagia. Good. And so how do we approach a patient with dysphagia? How do we take a dysphagia history? We can use a mnemonic called ADASAN. A D A S A N. And so what I have come to realize is that if we would get a question on dysphagia in surgery for the GMDC exam, the question usually tests our ability to distinguish between oesophageal carcinoma and achalasia, these two cases or these two conditions. And so we are going to focus mainly on them because this is an exam-oriented learning. And so the A in the mnemonic ADASAN stands for age. And so for age, we say that oesophageal carcinoma is common in the elderly, just like our patient who is a 60-year-old. Then achalasia, although it's or can occur in all ages, is common in the third to fourth decade. It means for patients between the ages of 30 to 40 with um, dysphagia, you should probably consider achalasia first before you think of oesophageal carcinoma. Then D is for duration. And so for the duration, if you have dysphagia with a long history and it's intermittent it is for achalasia but if you have dysphagia of short duration and progressive you can think of oesophageal carcinoma now the truth is that in oesophageal carcinoma dysphagia occurs when 60 to 80 percent of the oesophageal lumen is obstructed even in some patients we have a complete obstruction when they are first seen. And so because of that, a patient can have a tumor growing in the oesophagus, but would not have dysphagia. You will only have dysphagia when about 60 to 80% of the lumen is occluded or obstructed. That is why they tend to have a short and a progressive history. Then the next A in the ADASAN is associated symptoms. And so here we want to talk about weight loss and i want to say that weight loss is common or can occur in oesophageal carcinoma it can occur in corrosive oesophagitis which, which will give you strictures and achalasia because they all do not eat well and then that can result in weight loss and as you know commonly malignancies are associated with weight loss or cachexia and so the fact that Oesophageal carcinoma is a malignancy would even result in weight loss. And so at the sun, we are done with A, D, A. So the next is S. The sites the patient feels or things the difficulty in swallowing is. For achalasia and then oesophageal um, CA, they can all cause erythrosternal dysphagia as in the patient will point to the chest duct that's where he, he feels the food is stagnated so the erythrosternal region then a for apparent history i brought this up because i mean if a patient gives you a history of ingestion of corrosives it apparently it's it, it points to a stricture oesophageal stricture okay it points to oesophageal stricture then we have N, nature, the nature of the dysphagia. And here we want to talk about the fact that is the dysphagia to solids but not to liquids or it is to liquids alone but not to solids in the early parts when it started. And so dysphagia to solids but not to liquids initially indicates a fixed obstruction like 
a tumor in the esophagus. So the because of the tumor, solid substances cannot go through or go past the tumor, but liquids can meander their way. And so if you have a patient complaining of sol- dysphagia to solids but not to liquids initially, then you might be having a case of esophageal carcinoma, just like our patients had. And so that is one of the things that made us think that uh, the patient has esophageal carcinoma. Then the patient has dysphagia to liquids but not to solids in the initial stages. Then that would point more to achalasia. And so please take note of this. But towards the late stages of each of the conditions, they have dysphagia to both solids and then liquids. Now it is worth mentioning that achalasia can coexist with oesophageal carcinoma. In fact, in Baja, it is documented that about 5 to 10 percent of patients with achalasia would have an associated oesophageal carcinoma. Now let's look at the second question which was asked for this clinical case. The second question said, list four differential diagnoses of the presentation. And so we have oesophageal structure, that is the correct answer, achalasia, we have peptic oesophagitis, then we can have carcinoma of the cardia of the stomach. Then we have others like scleroderma. We can have diffused oesophageal spasms, etc. So these differential diagnoses are there to write. Yes, and so let's look at the third question. The, the third question was, list four investigations you will carry out. And so... The first we would want to mention is barium swallow. Barium swallow. I will show a picture of this investigation in the next slide because it is possible to get that in the OSCE and then questions will follow after that. But barium swallow, yes. Then the second investigation is an upper GI endoscopy called osophago gastro duodenoscopy so we are looking at the oesophagus the stomach and then the duodenum so oesophago gastro duodenoscopy and this is the primary means of diagnosis actually we may biopsy this tumor if we see it in the oesophagus to see whether it is a squamous cell carcinoma or an adenocarcinoma but i want to say that osophago gastrodidinoscopy is the primary means of diagnosing oesophageal ca then we may do bronchoscopy to see if there is infiltration of the tracheobronchial tree if the oesophag sorry the oesophageal ca has infiltrated the respiratory tree bronchoscopy will tell us then of course we can do another investigation, endoscopic ultrasonography. Other investigations we can do include a chest and abdominal CT scan to look for pulmonary and then liver metastasis. So in our next slide, let's look at how the barium swallow looks like. Because like I said, we may meet it in surgical or skin. Yes. And so this is um, a barium study I found online on um, oesophageal CA. So this study is basically a fluoroscopic study. It means that the x-ray was taken live. I mean, when the patient ingested the barium contrast, we took the x-ray and it's a live um, imaging. Now, what I want to show here is the barium um, swallow for a typical oesophageal CA case. So you see that there is, I mean, the barium contrast has outlined the oesophagus, but in the distal third or in the uh, lower part of the oesophagus, you can see some irregular narrowing of the oesophagus as opposed to the upper part where you can see the correct outline of the oesophagus. Okay, and so this is 
an irregular narrowing with a shouldering effect. It means that there is a transition from the normal mucosa into the part where the tumor is. And so you see that there is a filling defect. And that is the irregular narrowing with a shouldering effect. Then you see that above the um, obstruction by the oesophageal tumor, you see that the oesophagus is dilated. So there is a proximal dilatation of the oesophagus and that gives the rat tail appearance. And so this is how a barium swallow looks like and this narrowing, um, irregular narrowing indicates where the tumor is and then above the obstruction is the proximal dilatation. So when you see this, this is a barium swallow and then this irregular narrowing may indicate oesophageal CE and so kindly take notes. Very good. And so the last question for this clinical case was, what is the treatment for this condition? And for the treatment of this condition, it depends on the location of the tumor. So the location of the tumor can be in the upper part of the esophagus, that is the cervical esophagus, the middle third or the distal third. Now, if the location of the tumor is a cervical esophageal tumor, then radiation therapy. If it is in the middle third of the esophagus, we can do chemotherapy and or osophagectomy. Then, if it is in the distal third, we can do resection. And so this information was actually or is actually from Badger surgery. For further reading, please visit um, page 14, sorry, page 416 of the first volume of Badger talks about dysphagia in general so if you want further information on dysphagia in general kindly visit this because when you get a cardiothoracic surgery question it is either on dysphagia or on chest injuries the management of chest injuries and so thank you for watching this episode of tutor med please do not forget to share this video like the video and then um subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet and see you in our next video. Until then, bye!